Today we will go through the branch logger machine. So it will go in step. What we're gonna do first, we're gonna go through machine performance. We will show a standard piece of wood that we delined, which are similar texture. It's the same wood, similar texture. The only purpose of this is to show uh, the result with different RPM. All right, so we will start with that. All right, so for now long, because noise will be there, we will uh, start the tractor. I will set up the RPM of what I use usually, and then we will set up the RPM uh, set for the tractor. Film the tractor. So the tractor is a Kubota M59, about uh, 59 horsepower gross of, at the motor. However, the PTO, about 45 horsepower claim, I would say. You all lose about 15 horsepower at the PTO. So you need to have remote to run this machine. So the remote that I have, depending of the plug, depending of the plug that you have, but you need to have hydraulic hose to plug this. This machine needs remotes. So if your tractor does not have any set of remote, me, I have three, so one, two, and three. If you do not have any of that, you will not be able to run the uh, conveyor belt here. So the conveyor belt, so uh, if you come here, the two hydraulic line feed that motor here, that hydraulic motor, which feed the belt and the belt feed, uh, it's the output of your, uh, of your machine. Now, depending on how you plug your hose, will direct the, the direction of your hydraulic motor. But depending on how you plug it, the way you pull the handle will change depending on how you switch your, your hose. So, so again, mines are not identified, so I don't know. I will have to do trial and error to see which direction it goes. All right, so now <clears throat> we are behind the tractor and we will talk about the shear pin. The only shear pin located on this machine is at the end of my tips of the tractor is located right here. So you will snap shear pin because you will put trees that are bigger for the machine. So the size of it, of the shear pin that I'm using, it's a 516, 516, 18 tread. It works pretty good. So it doesn't matter the length, but you need at least two inches. If you measure here, you need at least two inches long. This thing is uh, about half a uh, quarter inch and you will snap, so buy at least 10 of those. Good, so we will do a bench test. Basically you benchmark. I, I ripped a piece of wood that's together. So we will run the machine now at the RPM that I like. And then after that, we will run the machine full RPM as per spec. But this will provide you the size and what the machine can do. So I have this piece will be sent about 1,200 RPM. The RPM is recorded, so you see the uh, the take on the mo on the motor, like uh, the bog down that it does. It doesn't do it as much as a chipper. Check. So the pieces are about four and a half, and now the length. So you have pieces about five and a quarter, some pieces are three, five, five on the long hand, and four in the short hand. Probably the first bite, so seven inches. So that is the RPM, was about that 3,000 RPM. Okay, now we're gonna feed some trees in it, about half of it, just to give you an example of the size. So about three and a half, about that size there. About two. Now we're gonna see the result. I'm gonna feed that in the machine. So again, RPM right now is at 1,000, almost 2,000.
All right, so we just cut about uh, 2,000 RPM, and those are the chunks that we were talking about. It makes two chunks about three inches by five and a half, about two by two. So what it does, it doesn't make, it doesn't take a lot of energy to chop the wood. Therefore, it doesn't take a big load on the tractor, and it also makes the sound very low. So if you work in a near your neighbor you don't annoy your neighbor because of the noise the downfall is it leaves you with big chunks so now what you can do with this it's either you uh, compost it make charcoal or get rid of it but it's because now it's way easier to manage when it's smaller like that and or you can even burn it as firewood so you can dry this in a big uh, you put this in a potato bag dry it and that's your uh, summer camp firewood all right, so now we are phase two. Uh, so we, we had the machine running at 2000 RPM. Now we will run it as per this recommended, which is 540 at the PTO. Therefore, I need to uh, drive the, tr the motor of the tractor to roughly 2500 RPM. And that should give us close to 540, which is the maximum speed performance for this machine. The benchmark I was talking about earlier, those are the the pieces, the length, same, same width as before, but now the lengths are six and a half, but most of them seems to be smaller, like it, it snapped the wood also more, so we have four inches here, same, look it snapped the wood in length. Four and four. So it seems to be more consistent at higher RPM. Now that we're done, the uh, 540 RPM at the PTO. Now we can see the result. So again, about three, uh, three inch and a half by about four and a half or four and three quarters. They seem to be very similar size. We have the smaller stuff here, which is same for, it seems to be more equal while your RPM goes faster. Three, again, three, a bit more, four and a half. It's easy on fuel and uh, it, it chunks. So not lots of energy required to, uh, to do it. And it's very fast. Uh, what you saw was real speed. It was not speed up. Now I'm gonna show a safety feature that you can actually remove the tree from the chipper while it's engaged. So do not think you're gonna get sucked in if, if you get stuck to it. I got a tree here. <laughs> And stop and remove it. Remove it as much as you want. It's not like my arm get pulled. I'm not scared at all here. That's amazing. So you can see the two blade here. It's actually two blade. All right, so now we, we are going to show how to uh, collapse this into travel mode or storage mode. Right now it's in travel mode position, so you are moving from a place. What you have to understand is you need a chain that holds that 
and when you're on the tractor everything shakes a lot so it's very dangerous there's a danger to this i smash my fingers on this because this can happen this can actually be locked out and when this goes this thing can flip super fast and i knock my finger on that it hurt a lot and that's what that chain's for so make sure that this is engaged that you see right now it's not right now it is i'm holding with my two hands I drop it and if it goes I let it go I'm not trying to catch it I'm gonna show you at the end what it can do so now I'm gonna show you the danger of it watch out ready so imagine your hand on that it hurts so you basically set it at the position you want and again use your two hands and do not let go because if it's not engaged Properly, it will go back on you. But anyway, uh, now it's engaging. Make sure it is, and that's how you operate it. You change your angle, whatever you want. So now that we're set up like that, I'm gonna show tracking. How do you set your tracking? You can remove this entire system with the hose, and then when you chip the wood, it just goes on the ground here, like it just fell in a big pile. And it's more sturdy and more stable, I, I found. Yep, and I have one on the other side. He just wanted to be supported a bit. Next step, take your hook, place it on the other portion here. Look at the wheels. That's why there's wheel. And I like to place it somehow. Um, I need to go back here and place it. So I prefer to have the chain and this thing because when you this is way safer because when you drive in the woods your entire tractor shakes so do not rely on this all right so now that we're done with this we're not finished we need to uh secure it so i secure it with the chain if you want you can put this thing there if you want next thing is we have to go in the back here And last thing is just to install that last lock. You place it like that, and then you screw it, and then, and then you secure. And this thing will not go anywhere, guarantee. And that's how you collapse it. Questions.